We're off and running. Okay, the book of James. <laughs> We're in the last part of uh, chapter one. Do you remember what we talked about last week? <laughs> I've slept since then. <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> Usually somewhere around seven to 14 times <laughs> in a week. Right? Well, Gotta get my, your naps in. You know? <laughs> my title here, we probably talked about trials and temptations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or listening and doing, or faith and deeds. Right. Now, James, right? Who's James? The author of the book of James? Who do we believe he was? Just Jesus' brother. Jesus' brother. half brother. Right. And who's he writing to? Twelve tribes. Yeah. All of the, remember after Stephen was martyred, the church was being persecuted and they dispersed all over the place. And this letter is meant to go to all of them, right? That's who he's writing to. And he's talking about trials and all of that stuff, right? And he finishes up in last week with every good thing comes from God, right? So he's got to get things in perspective. You know, when you're fighting trials, you're having some good things can happen too. But he comes down to verse 19 and he says, this you know. This is not a question. This is not an if or you might. Or He says, this, this is an imperative. <laughs> you know this, my beloved brother. Once again, he comes back to, right, my brother. We had this with... Uh, in Galatians, you know, when Paul was writing to the people he was trying to straighten out, but he kept calling them his brethren, right? And so, you know, James is saying the same thing. He's trying to identify with them. You know, my beloved brethren, right? Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. What do you think he's trying to get across? You ever heard the phrase, you get two ears and one mouth, we ought to use them in that yeah. you know, that priority, right? Yeah, I wrote a verse that one time. <laughs> never take, never hesitate to count. Mouth's one, ears two. Never hesitate to listen twice as much as the talking that you do. Yeah, I try to tell people, you know, when you're talking, you can't learn because you can't say something you don't already know. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you know, but w prior to this, what did he say? The good things come from God. God. So who are we supposed to be hearing? God. <laughs> Let's listen to God. So if you're having any kind of problems, right? Who should we be listening to? To God. If you're being persecuted, right? Or if you're just debating with a fellow church member, or if you're having an issue at work, or, and of course, none of us have any problems with family, <laughs> right? And who should we be listening to? Again, Listen God. to God, right? And then we can be slow to speak. And if we're slow to speak, we'll be slow to anger. wish they would have put the word react to anger because I don't think that we can really control how quickly we become angry but we can control how we react to our anger well we can control you know, if, if we're listening to God right and we're not just responding to what somebody's saying or what's happening around us right and getting angry if we before we do anything we just say Lord, how, what's happening? How do I deal with this, right? You know, or like Peter said when he's drowning, help, <laughs> right? You know, we don't have to come up with some kind of dissertation to talk to God. We just, <laughs> four letters, right? Help, and where's the Holy Spirit? With us. Not just with us, in us, <laughs> right? So God is ready to help us at all times. What did he say last week? If you lack wisdom, what do you do? Ask. Ask God, who's willing to provide. <laughs> he wants to give us wisdom. We just ask. 
Now, some of us have enough pride that we thought, oh, I can handle this, God. <laughs> right? How often does that fail? <laughs> Quite frequently. <laughs> right? Okay? So we're supposed to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You know, is God slow to anger? Yeah. Yes. He sure takes his time about yeah. yeah, doesn't he? And when he's punishing sin... Thank God he's taking care of mine. <laughs> I wouldn't want him to be angry with me all the time. For the anger of a man does not achieve the righteousness of God. <laughs> if you're all of a sudden angry, and, and there is righteous anger. Jesus showed us that. But if we make a habit of being angry, are we showing people what it's like to be with God? Are we being a, a good witness for God? If we're angry all the time and we're demonstrating anger, you know, if our words are not what they should be, and we're going to talk more about that in this lesson, right? Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls, <laughs> right? How did the word get to be implanted? I would study it. It helps to read it yeah. at least, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Where does it come from? From God. And where is God? In us. In us. Okay. So is God, and God who's willing to give us wisdom, right? If we just pay attention and to the word that he is implanting in us. <laughs> then we're able to deal with the issues. The verse starts with the word therefore, right? Which means we're supposed to pay attention and see what it's there for. <laughs> it's, it's, if we're quick to hear God, <laughs> right? Then paying attention to the word that God's implanting in us, we can put aside filthiness and wickedness and be a demonstration, right? And what does it say? The word implanted. What's the word that was implanted that's able to save your soul? But the gospel of Jesus Christ. And isn't... One of our priorities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. And can we do that and have people listen to us if we're angry? They don't listen to us when we're angry, do they? As soon as you get a point of demonstrating anger, they quit listening to you. Right? Right? Verse 22, but prove yourselves doers of the word, not merely hearers who delude themselves. <laughs> now, do you need to do something to be saved outside of accept Jesus Christ? That's it. That's it. Right? Saved by faith in Christ alone, nothing else. We don't need a priest. We don't need a pope. We don't need a baptism. We don't need any kind of work, Right? God's already done it all. But we had to have the word, didn't we? We, we needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Implanted in us then. And then God's able to save us. So now that we are hearers <laughs> from God, our natural next effect is to be a doer. Because of what God has done for us, you know, as, as the word says, you know, we love him because he first loved us, right? Well, then out of that love, we want to please him and do things. And so when the Holy Spirit tweaks our spirit and says, you know, that, that dude on the corner, that one, give him 20 bucks, <laughs> right? If the Spirit's telling you to do it, do it, Right? Or take in three more kids that you don't think you can handle, <laughs> right? Foster kids, 
single single lady trying to handle six <laughs> right <clears throat> but if it's a spirit that's leading you the spirit then god will provide right if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror for once he has looked at himself and gone away he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was <laughs> first off what was a mirror like in the first century <laughs> Metal. <laughs> yeah, wasn't real good, was it? <laughs> right? So you couldn't really see yourself that well to begin with, right? You know, but if you're hearing the word and not doing it, I mean, the main thing is, are we listening then? Are we actually hearing and absorbing, allowing the, that word from God to be implanted? If we don't end up doing, <laughs> we must not be paying attention if we're not doing, right? Well, one of the miscommunications that uh, we have with people that don't speak English, a lot of times you'll ask them, do you understand? And what, what they think, whenever we say, do you understand? They mean, did, did you hear me? And yes, they'll tell us yes. I understand. Well, they're really saying, yes, I heard what you said, but I, in reality, I have no idea what that translates to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had the same thing just the other day with the lady that has that massage parlor I'm trying to trade with, right? I'm helping her out. And I was explaining something about Google to her, you know, et cetera. And she, she said, hmm. I said, you understand? She goes, huh? <laughs> 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 right? She could hear me, but it didn't, it didn't translate, <laughs> right? So... Okay, verse 25, but the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty. We're not talking about the Ten Commandment law here, are we? We're talking about the law of liberty, right? And abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what he does. <laughs> If you're hearing from God, allowing that word again to be implanted, and it causes natural outflow, you're now doing the things that God is asking you to do. God says, you're going to be blessed. What does blessed mean? God's going to take care of our needs, plus, uh, it's just wonderful people who know God's blessings, he's taking care of us. We're yeah. Taken care of. You remember uh, the Beatitudes? Right? Blessed, blessed are. Blessed are. That's the same word. And it means blessed as in divinely, right? God is pleased with you and it makes you happy. <laughs> right? If you and God are on the same page, doesn't you, you naturally just feel better? <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, when you're running around, I know when I'm running around doing my own thing and not paying attention, you know, to what God is might be thinking about what I'm doing, right? You know, and you feel lost. And you just go, wait a minute, let me get back over here and get on the same page with God. That every, everything just seems to flow better. Right? If anyone thinks himself to be religious, but yet does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. <laughs> what is the value of religion, first off? When you use the word religion, it almost always has a works definition. If I do this work, that work, the other work. So an outward appearance of religion, I'm doing this. I'm doing the sacrifices. I'm, I'm uh, you know, coming from a Jewish background that these people are. You know, they got all of the, the um, ceremonies and, you know. Uh, yeah, you go to church, sit and feed them. Same thing today. You, you can have the outward appearance, right? I'm in church. Doors are open, I'm there, right? 
does that mean your heart's right? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot better chance than if you don't go to church, but, <laughs> but you can still be all messed up on the inside. Yeah. Right? You know, and you, you're going through all of that. But he's saying if you think yourself, right? If anyone thinks himself to be religious because I'm doing these things, but does not bridle his tongue. You ever known anybody who might say something before they think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> me, myself, Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right? Does that like get you in trouble more often than not? <laughs> yeah. And as he's saying, let's, you know, remember the first part that we're supposed to be quick to hear, slow to speak? <laughs> If you haven't bridled your tongue, you're probably not slow to speak. You're probably right off the bat. Here it is. I'm going to tell you what I think. <laughs> right? He's saying if he, you bridle his tongue, he deceives his own heart. And his, quote, religion is worthless. This is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father. You want to know what's pure and undefiled in the sight of God? Visit orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained by the world. I've never counted, but Dr. B told me one time that in the Bible it tells us to take care of the widows and the orphans 365 times. <laughs> Once for each day of the, of the year, <laughs> right? And here's one of those examples. And to keep oneself unstained by the world. So, again, if the love of God is flowing through us and now our actions are a result of that, wouldn't it be a natural thing to do to help people that can't help themselves like widows and orphans? Remember the first century? What, what was a woman to do if she's a widower? She's in big trouble. If she doesn't have a son, take care of her, right? And orphans, right? In the first century, they, they, I mean, they're just really messed up. There's just nothing there. To, there's no help. She didn't have a son, then her brother-in-law was supposed to take care of her. Yeah. So he's saying, as the church... We are to step in and help those that need help. Does this say, wait a minute, I just pay more taxes and the government should do it? Mm -hmm. I don't have to bother with it. Yeah, it doesn't say that, does it? It's up to us. The church, the body of Jesus Christ, not up to the government. We know how corrupt that gets. <laughs> Right. So, <clears throat> if you want genuine, true religion based on your relationship with Jesus Christ, <laughs> let God speak to you, implant his word in your heart, right? And let the love of God flow through you to do the works that God asked you to do. So, what happens to your will? But I want to go play golf today. <laughs> right? Sometimes we got to put that aside, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay? Of course, it's always a good thing that you have a reason not to go play a golf. Well, if one, it takes five hours. <laughs> There's the real hiccup. <laughs> and two, if you can't do it and enjoy it, you know, why do it? I, I got into that a little bit yesterday whenever we had the garage sale going, but and Kelly had three of the foster kids there. And right before OU game starts, all three need the Bicycle tires aired up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, sorry. 
I got to go watch uh, kickoff. I, I, I was actually resenting a little bit. And I mean, one little kid, I'm, I'm thinking he needs, needs to be able to put the compressor, or hook, hook up the valve stem. And I want to say, hurry up, kid. Hurry up. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I have to admit, I was a little bit resentful, but I didn't. <laughs> I understand. I, 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 I know this is the first has, touchdown. I know this has nothing to do with this, but I didn't get to see the end of the game. Who won, OSU or Texas? OSU. They held on. I thought for sure they were going to lose it when they cut it to three. Yeah, 38, 30. The habit, you know, of Texas coming back on them, right, in the past, I thought for sure it was going to be over, but they managed to put together another scoring drive, right? Yeah. And then Texas made another scoring drive too, but it used up all the clock, so. When that freshman looked around and fumbled the ball and dropped it, oh. and they lost about five yards, I thought that was their chance gone. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, they pulled it out. Okay, <laughs> chapter 2, verse 1. My brethren, right, once again, he's identifying with them as his brothers. Do not hold your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. Once again, what do we have here but the full title? Our Lord God, right? Jesus, who's Jesus? God. <laughs> also God. But this is everything about Jesus, right? He's our Lord. He's God. He's deity. He's also man, but God with us. And he's Christ, which means what? Messiah, right? Jesus has done it all for us. That's true. Okay? I'll, I'll throw in a little something on the side I was telling Lynn yesterday. You know, the Lord kind of pointed something out to me the other day, and that is a lot of women and some men don't like the fact of how God has laid out different roles for men than women in on this earth, Right? When it says that the man is the head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church, and women are to be, you know, to submit to their husbands and all this sort of stuff, right? Does that make men and women unequal? No. Well, defines their roles. God shows himself to us in three personages, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they're all equal, right? One God. One God, three personages. <clears throat> Do they have different functions? Yes. What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To dwell within us. And to point everybody to Christ, the second person in the, in the Trinity, right? The Holy Spirit points us to Christ. What does Christ do but bring us to the Father? They have different roles, but aren't they equal? They're all God. Yeah. They just take on different roles. And we have different <clears throat> roles. Just And even, and that's just that men and women thing, but the same things on earth. What God wants for me may not be what God wants for Jerry. <laughs> right? That's right? Doesn't make either one of us better, does it? It just, that's God's will for us. God said of John, you know, he might, you know, I, I might want him to live until I come back. Right? He didn't say he was going to do that, but he said he was making a point. <clears throat> My will for John and for the other d apostles, different. And John did live the longest, didn't he? <laughs> He lived long enough to write Revelations when he was an old man around 90 AD. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that he loves any one of us more than any of the others, right? And he says here that we can't have an attitude of personal favoritism, right? 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Messiah, right? Jesus is our Savior. He's also the Messiah, right? And who reveals God to us, right? But he's revealing himself to everybody. Then it just becomes who's going to accept Christ. And thank God the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us and drags us <laughs> pretty much into the kingdom of God. For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, but there also comes in a poor man in dirty clothes, how would we react? Do we treat them different? Definitely. And he is making quite a contrast, right? The one comes in with a gold ring and fine clothes. And, and in the Greek, there's two different words for poor. And one of them is a poor man that's working his tail off just to eat. This one is someone that is just completely destitute. Has no method of doing anything for himself, a beggar. He probably smells bad too. He I probably see. smelled. That's what Lynn said. That's what I was <laughs> does he stink? Or what? He probably does. How many of us remember Bruce? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I you know. Remember one? I don't know who it was. I don't want to remember. The, that Bruce was sitting in there, and this guy came down with a spray. I know. I was thinking of the same right. thing, Jerry. And I know exactly who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, you know, he brought the lights on, didn't he? I'll never uh, forget that. Yeah. That, that was your teacher. <laughs> The poor women around him were just suffering. You know, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so we have this contrast, right? And he says, God says, <clears throat> and you pay special attention to the one who is wearing fine clothes and say, you sit here in the good place, right? And you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down by my footstool. So they get to sit on the floor. It's kind of human nature, isn't it? But it's not God's nature. Look at the contrast between God and us. And he invites us in. He doesn't just invite us in. He makes us part of the body of Christ, right? As Hal Lindsey pointed out in Romans 6 and in Ephesians, Paul explains that in some miraculous way, right, we are sitting here at Highland Hills Baptist Church and we are also sitting at the right hand of God the Father right now. Right now. <laughs> Not later when we get to heaven, quote unquote, right now. We're already there. In Romans 8, right, 28 and forward, when it tells that all things work together to the good, the verse ends with that he has already glorified us. Already. Past tense. <laughs> Not something that's going to happen in the future, right? So God, this infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing being, accepts the wretched man that I am, that we all are, right? And then we make this big distinction just because somebody's got a gold ring and somebody else doesn't look so good and doesn't smell so good. Not exactly the way God would like us to behave, is it? Right? Says, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? <laughs> you know, what are you hoping to gain by putting the rich guy in the front, giving him the prime place? You know, in the rest of your life, they're probably being persecuted by the rich guy. 
The rich people take advantage of the poor people as a rule throughout history, right? You wouldn't necessarily consider evil for that guy coming down and spraying out more of the on him. Maybe, yeah, but not evil. I mean, it's not like you're, you know, kicking him out the street because he doesn't look nice. Just, hey, man, Just trying know. to freshen up the room. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But do we pay enough attention, right? Or are we becoming judges, right? We are to make judgments, Matthew 7. We are to make judgments, but we are not the judge, right? Do you understand the distinction? I've always heard that if it's biblical, you can judge. Well, basically, you make judgments, you know, Jesus says, by their fruit, you will know them. Yeah. Right? You're making a judgment. Right. But we don't judge them. We're not their judge. God is their judge. Jesus we, is. We don't pronounce sentence. Yeah, you right? can say, you know, you're a sinner, blah, 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 but you don't say, you're, you know, you're going to hell because of this. That's, well, you know, just... you are going to hell because of it. God tells us that. Yeah. So we can tell them that, right? Mm -hmm. When you're witnessing and you say, look, there's only two places to go. You can accept the one and only way to go to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus. You reject Jesus, you go to the only other place there is to go, and that's hell, mm. which was created by for Satan and the demons. It wasn't created specifically for you, but that's the only other place to go. Mm. If you reject God, now you've got eternal, eternal damnation as a result in hell. What makes more sense to you? <laughs> you know? And you get people to stop and think about it. Right? Yeah, the attitudes of these people these days, they, they don't really care. Some. Yeah, some. But, you know, and, but they do that at their own peril. Yeah. I think they may God do it. allows us to make that kind of decision. I think they may do it just because they're on camera or something. Probably. Well... Yeah, they, they don't really believe that there is a God, that there is a condemnation. Mm -hmm. that there are no, God. they don't want to believe. They, they've decided to make you know, themselves God of their life so they can do what they want to do. Right. And God will allow you to do that. But when judgment day comes, you're not going to like it. <laughs> Because you're not the God of your life. God is God. There's only one God, and it ain't, isn't you or me. <laughs> right? It's Jesus Christ. And he's going to separate, quote, the sheep from the goats. <laughs> right? And you definitely better be in the sheep, <laughs> allowing God to be your, your shepherd. If you're running off doing your own thing, then the consequences are tremendously bad. Well, that's our lesson for this morning. Any questions or comments?